Hi there, this is my channel, Yaru Walks. In the year 2024, I will embark on an epic walking journey across the United States. I plan to hike 8,000 miles and to cross the U.S. three times, via the Appalachian Trail, Pacific Crest Trail, and Continental Divide Trail. In the hiking world, this is known as a calendar year triple crown and has been completed by only a handful of hikers in history. The calendar year triple crown has traditionally been completed by jumping within or between the trails throughout the year, primarily to avoid snow, but also to avoid other seasonal hazards such as floods, extreme desert heat, and wildfires. For my attempt, I'm trying to hike each trail on a continuous, unbroken, end-to-end -end footpath, and to accomplish this, I must hike across all four seasons. I will be posting weekly updates along the way, so you can join me for the journey. Wish me luck. It was like up. It was down the road two miles. That's so crazy. Like up there or back to the right? Back, back up. And someone's yeah. camping there right now. Do you not know what you're doing? <laughs> Alrighty, I am on a road walk, uh, 20 miles long from Big Sky, uh, connecting to a trail that's up here that'll run through the foothills and then send me to West Yellowstone, Montana, which is a town. Uh, it's not Yellowstone, the national park. It is close to it, but it's not part of the national park, just to be clear. Uh, yesterday I took a zero mile day. So then it's two nights later I'm coming into Big Sky through that uh, Bear Canyon. It's sketchy because uh, the guy who gave me the hitch out of Ennis, the town where I resupplied the day before, warned me that from that area all the way down to West Yellowstone where I'm going tomorrow night is like high grizzly country. Um, he lives out here in a cabin, so I guess he knows what he's talking about. So I just had kind of a sketchy feeling coming into Big Sky that night and uh, I make it in just outside of Big Sky Heidi picks me up we're on our way back to Bozeman and then like a few minutes into the car ride she says you know you're lucky you didn't come in a couple of nights ago and I say why she says well uh, three or four nights ago a guy was out camping in the canyon next to you at a campground and he was supposed to meet up with his friend two days later, and he doesn't show up. So his friend goes in looking for him, and he finds his tent, and he discovers that his friend is dead in the tent. And he calls the police, and he reports that his friend appears to have been mauled by a grizzly bear, uh, and is dead. And I'm like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I had a bad feeling when I was walking through the woods, uh, but that's another level. And so the police come out to investigate his death. And when they look further into it, they realize this man was not mauled by a grizzly bear. He had been murdered and cleaved to death with giant stab wounds. So everybody on Big Sky right now is on edge because it seems like there's some type of psycho killer who might turn into a serial killer out here murdering people camping in the big sky area and that happened just three or four nights before i arrived in that canyon <laughs> which i knew nothing about it's a beautiful night for a failed murder attempt All right, we're going black ops mode now. So many things to worry about out here.
So I'm working my way up the Skyline Trail now. I started out today uh, kind of camped near to a parking lot, but I slept in the woods uh, back by that road. And the first start of today's hike is a climb from 7,000 feet up to right around like 10,300 feet. And the trail is dirt right now, but I'm wanting to see, will it transition to fully snow? And if so, at what elevation on the north side and on the south side does it transition to snow? Uh, in the White Mountains, the snow line was pretty consistent at around 3,300 feet when I was passing through. And I think the elevation was consistent because it was more early spring, late winter, and the snow line was defined by the melt. And the melt was pretty consistent on each peak. Now out here though, because it's new snow, I don't think that you'll have the same predictability, but I do think I will generally see that the trail becomes snowier, obviously, as you increase in elevation. And uh, the snow will increase as you're in the shadow, shadowier areas, i.e. the north side of a peak where the sun does not hit as directly and there'll be less on the south sides. But up on this ridge line, there's not really gonna be much of a north or a south contrast. I'll just be on a flat top. So the question is, will this trail at some point turn into solid snow? I really do not know. But this is phase one of gathering snow intelligence in the center of the United States. So I'm now at 8,000 feet, uh, and so kind of following the elevation climb at 7,000 feet, the trail was entirely dirt, and then there was snow on either side of the trail. And then at 7,500 feet, the trail started to accumulate snow on it, but it was more dirt than it was snow. And now at 8,000 feet, the trail is more snow than it is dirt. I still have 2,000 more feet to go. Uh, so I guess we'll just keep watching and see how the trail continues to develop. Snow just dropped on me. <laughs> All right, I'm at 9,000 feet now. Uh, and I'll say the snow has been constant, uh, yeah, probably for the last half mile to a mile. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep going and at some point I'll be at 10,000. All right, I am approaching 10,000 feet. And the snow is halfway up to my knees now, so maybe six to eight inches deep. And the trail is just totally gone. So basically I'm just walking across a mountain now. <laughs> so once I'm up there, I'll be at 10,000 feet. And then to put into perspective what I'm on right now, if you look at these mountains over here, I'm at eye level, so I'm going to be ridge walking 
the mountains that I'm on, but they look basically like those of way over there. Alrighty, I'm working my way now across the actual summit of Snowslide Mountain. The trail is non-existent up here. It's must, I don't know if it would be visible or if it's hidden, hidden under the snow. But the trail approximately goes in this direction. So I at least know where to go. Found the trail again. Uh, and I'm working my way down from 10,000 feet now. And I don't think I'm going to go that high again. Uh, but I'm definitely going to stay above 8,000 feet for a while. So based on what I was seeing, that should mean that I'm going to stay in snow for a while. So as I'm walking along here, my feet knock a little bit of snow off, and then they start rolling, and they'll go for a ways. Watch what the snow does. It's either this or it's just down below me. But this is a lot easier to hike right here, so I'm gonna hike this part and then I'll cut down to the left, I think. Okay, yeah, I've relocated the trail. It's down there and then it runs off that way. So uh, yeah, going down to lower elevation. So where I was before was quite a ways up there. And now what I'm doing to come down is the trail did a giant switch back and then a U to come back. And then it's somewhere over here. Uh, but that whole loop was half a mile. And so I'm now doing a bushwhack down that's 0.2 miles. And I'm following uh, the just a natural elk trail. So elk or deer. So anyway, I'm following this trail down and it's cutting its own switchback. So the deer and the elk actually walk a switchback route, which is pretty cool. Well, how cool was that? I keep trying to get audio of the elk bugling, but they only do it once. 
and then it goes silent for 10 minutes and then, <laughs> then it happens again but i'm not recording it's pretty cool though if i were uh hunting i definitely would have uh yeah had dinner tonight Alrighty, I'm going straight, then left, and then up and over. So those are definitely grizzly bear prints, but I don't think they're from today. So even if they were, my only choice is to continue ahead. But I paused for a second because I initially thought they were footprints, uh, but they're bear prints. But I'll say the one nice thing about grizzly bear footprints in the snow is that a grizzly bear is so big that it's like the grizzly bear broke the snow trail for me. Though there's not very much snow here. I want to say unfortunately. It's still fortunate that there's no snow here. But if it had been deeper snow, it would have been even more fortunate that the grizzly bear were walking in front of me. So I've been following the grizzly bear tracks for the last half mile. The trail goes this way on the switchbacks. The bear took the trail halfway up this pass and then it turned off into those trees. All right, I've hit the top of the pass. I think it's going to be fast from here to the road. And then when I hit the road, I think there's not going to be snow on it. It'll be fast from the road at that trailhead down to the main road, which would then go into Big Sky. None of this will make sense to anybody now, but I've been looking at the map. Those are my predictions. I'm just curious to see if those predictions will come true. It's good when you're out here and you have predictions about uh, snow and then those predictions come true. Uh, Cause then you just, you have a better sense of your environment and you're better able to forecast how long it's gonna take to do something, so. I guess we'll see. So I just took about 50 steps forward and there is no snow in this trail. And I mean, the last clip you saw of me trudging through snow that was, I don't know, halfway up to my knees, that was maybe five minutes ago. So, and that was what it was like coming up the other side of this pass. I think I'll keep hitting snow as I go down, but the fact that this is as clean as it is, is exactly what I was talking about. So I'm pretty proud of that prediction. And I had no idea that this was coming, you know, this quickly. Oh my God, you're crazy yeah. mofo. <laughs> Can I throw my stuff in the back? Absolutely, open the door here. I put the bed, that, just open the door here. Okay, oh this, yeah. Oh, locked, oh, hang on here. There you go, yep. try it now. Okay. There you go. Sweet, thank you. I'm Craig. Woo. Say what? I'm Craig. Oh, yeah. Night shift, yeah, nice night to meet shift. You. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I see why they call you night shift. It's yep. fucking uh, 1049. Yeah.